Hi, in this video, we're going to be looking at how to draw a French Bulldog. You can click on the link in the description below and we will email you the guide that I'm working through in the tutorial. For this tutorial, you will need a sheet of paper, a ruler, an HB pencil for drawing and planning out, and, and then any B pencil for sketching and shading. I'm using a 4B and then finally an eraser. Right, we're going to start with our HB pencil and just do a little bit of planning for this picture. If you have a look at the guide that we've sent you, I've put a few notes for how you can plan out your picture. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to draw a line for the floor and then we'll measure up and find the nose and the eye line as well as points for the ears. You can refer back to these notes to hear the measurements again. Right, let's get started. Firstly, we're going to turn our page into the horizontal position. Put your ruler near the bottom and just draw a light line right across, about a third of the way up the page. Um, you can either fold your page to find the center or measure it. I'm just doing uh, squeezing the bottom of my page so that I have a marker for the center of the page. And I'm going to line my ruler up with that marker and measure up four centimeters from my floor line. So I've lined up four centimeters with my line. I'm going to make a small mark there. This is my marker for where the nose is going to be. Right, so let's draw the nose. It's just a almost a flattened C shape. I've made mine about two centimeters wide. And then it comes down into a point. You can join that point on your fold line or your center line. And then from there, we're going down to his muzzle. So don't just draw a solid line down, make it a little bit of a broken line. And the start of his mouth is going to be just above this floor line. And then we're going to do a, a semicircle shape. Try and line it up so that they are hitting the floor around about the same spot. So I'm making sure that each side of my semicircle, it matches. You can even use your pencil and line them up to check. Okay, now, if you look at this picture, his jowls are just cascading onto the floor. So we're going to make another half moon kind of a shape. Okay, above his nose, he's got a little wrinkle line. And again, we're not just going to draw a solid line down for each of his jowls. Rather, try and draw the wrinkle lines. Give each line a little bit of a curve. But what we are doing is heading down to his jowls at the bottom. Now we're going to get our ruler out again to do our eye line. The reason that we're doing this is because we want the eyes to be in line. Um, sometimes when we're drawing, we don't line up the eyes and then that can make the picture look less realistic. For our eye line, it needs to be about seven centimeters long and the nose should be at the center of this line. So at about three and a half centimeters, you're going to put it on the nose and we're going to draw our seven centimeter line. What I've done is put my ruler at a slight angle. So this is not a, sh a, a straight line, it's a slanted line. I'm gonna actually even slant my line a little bit more. And that's because the dog has, um, he's cocked his head slightly to the side. Um, but drawing this line is going to make sure that the eyes are, are even, they're on the same line. Right, the outside of the eye is going to be from the outside of this line, so we can just mark it off lightly. This is a construction line, you don't want to see it at the end, so make it super light. And we're going to do our last measurement for the face again now. The ears also need to be at the same angle that the eyes are at. So from the end of the eye line, line your ruler up with it and make a mark 8 centimeters up from the edge. This is going to mark the top of the ears. So we're going to do that on both sides of our line. And that will ensure that the eyes and the ears are at the same angle. Okay, so we just have little markers to help us along the way. Okay, let's draw the eyes now. French Bulldogs, they have quite big, bulgy eyes. So we need to uh, make them, I'd say, at least like two centimeters high. And they come to a point on the outside. So the edge of the eye is going to go on the edge of that line. So it's a good starting point because you know you need to end there. And you've drawn this wrinkle for the nose, around the nose. So you kind of know your eye needs to end before that. Again, try and line your eyes up. So around about the same spot that the eye started on the left, it should start on the right. 
Okay, take the time now to check your, your eye, make sure that they match. The eyes should be as symmetrical as possible. So check the height is the same, um, the width is roughly the same, and the eyes end and start at the same height. You can use your ruler for this just to measure it off. So here I can see I haven't ended my eyes off on the same line, so I'm just going to adjust that quickly. Okay, we just want to make them look as similar as possible. Okay, once we've got the outline of the eyes, we can start adding the pupil. That's just a nice big circle. And then um, let's start drawing the outline of the face. So from his jowls, he's got a little cheekbone that comes through here. So we're going to draw that because it's going to help us get the outline of the face. And on the other side, he's, the other fold for his cheekbone is just below the eye. Now we can follow this outline to get the outline of his head. It's also a little bit of a bulge around his eyes. Avoid just drawing a round head. Their heads are not perfectly round. The nose is halfway up the face, so we did four centimeters from the ground line to the nose. So if you can roughly do four centimeters above the nose, you have a marker for where to end your um, head or where to aim for, for the top of the head. Follow this cheekbone again and take it to the fold around the eye. Now, don't worry if it's not perfect. As we add shading in, you are going to be able to adjust some of these lines. That's why we're drawing them really lightly. Now our ears start at the same height as the eyes and we've marked off where we want them to end. Again, don't just draw two triangles. Look carefully at the folds and creases in the dog's ear. You can see it curves and then there's a crease and then it comes round, it's really rounded at the top. Um, for it to look like a French Bulldog, you need to get that rounded ear right, because that's something that people identify with a, a French Bulldog. It's going to make it look like a French Bulldog. So spend uh, some time getting this right. Okay, so we're gonna start from the, the eye line, draw our curve coming out. Then we've got the fold in the ear. That comes out slightly further than the curve. Um, and then again, don't just draw a straight line up. It's going to come in and then out again. A nice rounded top. French Bulldogs have large ears, so don't feel like you're making the ear too big. Okay, then we can come down with a slight curve and then it has a little kick going out as it joins with the head. So now let's go to the other side. Again, go to the eye line, come out to the side of the head. We've got this little C shape and then the fold of the ear is going to come out slightly further than the C shape. It's going to curve up. Again, a perfectly straight line is not going to look realistic. Intentionally make a slight curve in the line and a little bump. Okay, and then it's going to come down and smooth out. Not a straight line into the head, a little bit of a curve going out. Again, check the ears. Do they match? Are they roughly the same width? So if I look, my, the ear on my right is, is slightly narrower than the ear on the left, and actually the ear on the left is looking um, correct. Just going to come and widen this ear out a little bit here. That's looking like it matches more. Right, let's go down to the, the mouth again. So earlier we did a, the top part of the mouth. Now we're going to do the bottom. Again, it's going to come out he has a bit of a dimple almost in the middle of his mouth and then we're going to have another curve coming out. Let's start adding in some shading now to make sure that our face is right. We don't want to draw too many things and then it's, um, we run out of space to make corrections. So I'm going to get my 4B pencil out now and start adding some shading. Let's start again with the nose. So the middle of his nose, there's a line coming up and then um, for each nostril, it's kind of a flattened out S. So you're going to come out and draw a curve as if it's an S on each side. Again, making sure the height is the same. So if I've drawn the height on the right hand side, I'm just going to take my pencil across and make a little mark there. So I know how hard to make the left nostril. We need to try and make these nostrils match. So it's a, this one's going to be a backwards S because they're symmetrical. Right, and then they've got um, quite a narrow nostril. So we're just going to bring the top curve of the S down and join it to the line that we've just drawn. 
and shade that in nice and darkly. I'm going around the edge of the nose now, just darkening it up. There is a light patch of shading at the top of the nose, so the, the light will hit the top of their nose. So we can shade a little bit darker at the bottom. I'm using cross hatching in this video. I think hatching and cross hatching work well for dogs because it gives you the illusion of fur, uh, not that they have fur on their noses. <laughs> If you want to learn more about the different styles of sketching, you can watch our video on the best sketching styles. Okay, I'm just going to go on the top and add a little bit of dark shading around the top and then here. Now I've found as I've added my shading, the nostrils are not as clear. So I'm just going to go over those two nostrils again and make them nice and dark. Right, and now we're going to move down the face. So again, a little bit of dark shading. Dogs have that. The, well, the French Bulldog has that crease down the front of his muzzle. Okay, and I'm adding in a few of those wrinkles. So we started with a, a nice big wrinkle on top of his nose here, just darkening that wrinkle. He's got a couple of wrinkles between his eyes here. And usually when there's a wrinkle, there's a little bit of dark shading on one of the sides of the wrinkle to show the fold. So I'm just going on the inside of my wrinkles and with my cross hatching I'm adding a little bit of dark shading but you can add a little bit just a small amount of shading above the nose you want to leave a nice white line or a white area above the nose so that it shows the light shining on that wrinkle and makes his nose stand out nicely right we're going to have some dark shading around this muzzle here so I'm just doing my hatching around the edge of the muzzle coming down. There'll also be some shadow here at the bottom of his jowls because they're resting on the floor. Try and mirror this on, on the opposite side. As you get down to the jowl, they can change, but this uh, shading underneath the nose should be fairly similar. Okay, and I'm gonna just go over this line here again. The line for the top of the mouth. I'm gonna add in a few wrinkles on his nose and muzzle. Don't worry about getting uh, the line in the exact same space as I have because these French Bulldogs just have wrinkles everywhere. So you can get away with getting the line a little bit wrong or a little bit off center. It will still look right. So again, around all of these little fold lines that we've drawn, we're just going to add a little bit of shading. You can either do it on the left or the right of the fold line. And then his whole muzzle area needs to be a slightly darker color to the rest of his face. So I've done a cross hatch over this area that needs to be in shadow. And then over the rest of the muzzle area, I'm just going to do a hatch, so one direction. So that there is a difference between the muzzle and the rest of the face, but it's not as dark as the shading that we've just done. If you find that you've done the shading and now it looks too similar to the first areas that we shaded, just go over those areas one more time and make them slightly darker. Sketching, it's a process when you shade. You can't get it right the first time. It's something that you need to work on um, and keep going back to as your picture progresses. Right, let's move our shading up to the eyes now. There's two big wrinkles on each side of the eye. I'm just gonna darken those nicely. Now for this one, the shading must be on the side that's closest to the eye because we want the eyes to be set back and the nose to come out a little bit. So if you do shading on the inside where the nose is, it's going to set the nose back and make the eyes pop out. So we do the shading on the outside to make the eyes go back a little bit. Dark shading makes things appear further away. They have quite a, a dark outline around the eyes, so you can do some nice dark shading around the outside of the eye and um, some nice wrinkles. They're often frowning French Bulldogs. So we're gonna draw some frown lines, a little bit of shading around those lines. Okay, now let's move on to the eye. We've got our pupil in the middle. Just draw a nice circle. Don't shade the whole pupil in. So leave a little fleck of light in the pupil. So you can see I've left a tiny little fraction of light there and that makes a big difference at the end of your picture. Um, if you do color in the whole eye, you can use your eraser and just pull back some of that shading. 
Okay, around the edge of the pupil, you'll have dark shading, and that shading is going to get lighter and lighter as it gets closer to the pupil. Now we need to leave a little bit of light shading on the eye too. Um, so I haven't left it. I'm going to take my eraser and just do a flick on that top right corner. Rub out some of the shading that I've put there. And work around it. A little bit of light in the eyes, it makes them come alive. Right, while we're working on the eye, let's move across to the other eye. And this will help us keep them similar if we shade them right next to each other. Sometimes you do this shading and then you come back to your eye later and you've forgotten how you did your eye. So rather do them at the same time, it will make them look more similar. Okay, so we're going to start with our dark shading around the edge of the eye. Our pupil, I've forgotten to leave my little fleck of light. So I'm just going to use my eraser to pull back some of the shading. So your eraser is not only for rubbing out mistakes, it, it is also a drawing tool that can be used. Right, a dark outline around the edge of the iris, getting lighter as you move in. And then again, on that top right edge of the circle, you can just rub back a little bit of the shading. If you want to draw a puppy or make it look like a puppy, you would do even more of the white shading. It makes the eyes really stand out and look big. Um, you could also draw the eyes slightly bigger. It will also make it look like it's a puppy. Right, let's uh, shade some of these wrinkles around the eyes. The wrinkles should really just follow the shape of the eye. Uh, if you imagine a French bulldog frowning, think about where the fold lines would be. So they'd have some lines on the inside of their brows. A little bit of shading there. And then as you draw a fold line, just do a little bit of a light hatching around it. Okay, I'm moving down to my cheekbone now. I'm gonna just add a few more dark lines in under these eyes. Right, now we're gonna go around the edge of the face. Oh, I forgot one. Um, there will be darker shading just around the edge of the face to make it look more rounded. So go, don't use a straight line, you can see I'm using almost a hatching line, a jagged line as I go around the edge. The ear is going to make a little bit of a shadow, so I'll just do a little bit of a scribble there to show the shadow of the ear. Okay, and on the top of his forehead he's got a couple of frown lines. We're going to do these slightly lighter because these wrinkles are not as prominent as the wrinkles that are on his face. So we're just going to do a light lines. So put a couple of fold lines in the top of his head. Again, think of a person frowning or a dog frowning where the, um, the fold lines would be. And then over those lines, we're just going to do some light shading. If you want to make the the fold line slightly darker than the shading, you can, but don't make it as much of a contrast as before. We don't want these wrinkles to be as prominent. Okay, and then again, I'm just going with this cross hatching technique to make somebody think of fur when they look at the picture. All right, let's shade in his mouth next. So his jowls are going to cast a shadow over the mouth, almost in sort of a heart shape. So that's what we're aiming to shade in this section here. It needs to be quite dark, it's at the bottom of his face. I'm going to do a cross hatch. The rest of this chin will also be slightly darker. It can't just be white because that makes it look like it's sticking out um, and it's not sticking out. So we're just going to add a little bit of shading over that area. Much lighter, so I'm not pressing as hard and I'm drawing my lines further apart to get a different tone. Right, we're going to move on to shading the ears now. So let's start with where we started drawing. We have this curve at the bottom. It's going to be in shadow because the, the crease of the ear is above it. And there's going to be slightly darker shading at each end of it and a little bit lighter in the middle. There's another fold in the ear just over here. So we're going to do that a bit lighter, add some shading around it. 
So some of these lines are to show shading, but some of them are just to show the texture of the animal. Right, there's a fold of fur, so this will be showing the outside of the ear. We're not going to just draw a straight line up, the same as the muzzle, it's going to be a broken line. So I'm just going to do it about halfway up the ear and it curves out, it's not a straight line. And on this area, I'm doing some shading to show the fur and to make it slightly darker so that there's a difference between the inside of the ear and the outside of the ear. And here I'm going to continue my line and again do a little bit of shading. This line should almost go to the top of the ear and then they often have a little bit of hair in their ears at the bottom here and it will be slightly darker so we're just going to add a few lines in there and we'll leave the inside of the ear white. Right, let's move on to the next ear. So this one is going to be at more of an angle so we can draw a solid line going all the way up and then tapering off the edge of the ear. Okay, we'll have some dark shading at the bottom of the base of the ear. So now we've shaded in the ear, making uh, light lines as we get closer to the top of the ear. We're going to add a little bit of shading in this top right corner of the ear, make it a curve of shading, slightly darker in the top, the most right top corner, and then getting lighter as it comes down. We've got a little bit of a curve in the ear, Again, this C fold will be in shadow, so we're going to make that darker, get lighter as it gets to the face, a little bit of dark shading. Now, as I'm doing this, I've noticed that I've curved the head too much here. It should have a straighter line, so I'm just going to fix that now with my shading. I'm going to make the line the way that I want it to be, and then I can do the ear shading over this. Going in several different directions will also create a great texture for this picture. Right, we've got a little fold around the edge. So if all your lines are going in the same direction, it will make the picture look a little bit flat. By adding in the different lines, it adds interest to the picture. Right, again, having a look at my picture, I'm noticing that I have not added enough dark shading around this left eye. If I look at the original, it's got a lot more dark shading. So I'm just going to go and add in a bit more shading there in those places. Right, let's start adding in the body of, of this bulldog now. So I've made a note here that the left paw should stick out about three centimeters from the jowl. This just gives you um, a point to aim towards, make sure that you're getting things the right size. So from the edge of the jowl here, I'm just gonna mark off three centimeters. And now I know where my foot needs to go. The foot starts um, in line with the eye, and then it slowly works its way out. We've got a little, um, lump there and then we've got the four toes that are visible before. Right, so we're coming out from the eye line. Again, not a straight line. I'm adding in my first knuckle. Now I've been using my 4B and I'm deciding I'm going to go back to my HB because I'm not feeling sure of myself and I want to make sure it's nice and easy to erase this. Uh, what I like to do is start along the bottom because each toe, it's just like a C or a curve. So you can add those four curves in and then from there draw each of the toes. So I'm going to go from the side of the jowl. I'm not sticking directly to my floor line so I'm starting from where my jowl is and I'm just making each curve for the toe. There's four toes visible in this picture. So that gives us a guide as to how to, to draw it. Now these toes need to show a knuckle so I'm going to start we have shown the knuckle on the outside toe and try and line them up a little bit so that they're in a similar spot. Again, don't worry about this too much. The shading is going to hide a lot of mistakes. Right, and then um, his little nails are maybe half a centimeter up from the bottom of the toe. Just make a little V shape to note where they are 
and this will help with shading later. So about half a, centi uh, half a centimeter up from the bottom of the toe, and make a V. Make it towards the left hand side of the toe. This end one, I'm drawing my V almost right on the line. Okay, now we're going to start with our shading. So the easy part is the bottom of each toe is definitely gonna be in shadow. I'm going to get my 4B out again to, to do this shading because it needs to be nice and dark. And I'm just doing my hatching in a C shape around the bottom of the toe. Go up to almost the nail line. You can go around the nail a little bit. The next thing that we're going to do is each little toe is going to cast a slight shadow on the toe behind it. So we're going to go along the line that we've created and just do lighter than we did at the bottom, some shading along each of these toe lines that we've drawn. Okay, and the one at the end will also have some shading on it. Okay, then we're going to add a third layer of shading, really light over the top of the toe. Now this might be looking funny to you now, but as we draw the rest of the picture, this is going to blend in. I'm just going to finish it off by going over some of these toe lines. Again, don't make it a solid line, just draw broken lines. Right, our next place for shading will be along the side of the face. So the face is going to make a shadow on the right hand side of this foot. Um, so I'm gonna do some dark shading all along this right hand side of the foot. And we can also make it dark at the top this is because we want the foot to look like it's far away and it's coming forward. So dark shading at the end makes that look further away and lighter shading in the front pulls it forward. Right, then we've got this little lump here. So we're gonna shade around that shape and just do some nice light shading to add texture. So this, this light shading is really just for texture more than anything else. Now spend some time looking at your paw and the paw in the example and saying, mm, do I need to lighten some things? Do I need to darken some things? So I'm gonna lighten this paw and each of my little toes, I'm gonna just use my eraser to lighten them up a little bit. I also feel like I need a bit more dark shading at the top. Really press hard with that pencil to get those dark lines. And the trick to doing hatching or cross hatching is that there should be a big difference between your lines. If all the lines are the same tone or shade, the picture can start to look wishy-washy and you need to have really strong lines and strong tones when you do cross hatching. There must be a big difference between the different lines that you've drawn. Right, let's move on to the, the leg on the right hand side and then we will come back and, and work on this foot again if you're not happy. Now he's kind of leaning to the side so his leg on the right hand side is going to stick out quite a bit more going to be seven centimeters so you need to get your, your ruler and your HB out again and let's measure on this floor line seven centimeters from the jowl. Okay now we have our end point that we're working towards. This foot is going to come out in several little fat rolls so those are going to be curves almost like a flattened out L shape that goes along. So I've done one, two, three of them. You can see I'm not sticking to the floor line. His, um, his paws are coming over the floor line. So this floor line is almost a, a horizon line that's in the background. It doesn't mean that he should sit perfectly on the horizon. Right, and then we've got our toes on this side. Before I attempt my toes, I'm going to draw the top part of the leg so that I have a heart for the leg and then I can fit the toes into the space that I need. Um, toes can be tricky, so it's best to do everything that's around it and then it gives you an idea of spacing. So you can see this right hand leg again is starting at the eye line. So I'm going to start at my eye line and let it come out. Again, not a straight line. He's got a couple of little fat rolls and folds in this line. Okay, and then bring the final toe out to this mark that's seven centimeters away. Okay, again, a little lump in each toe. These toes are slightly different because we're looking at them from the side. So we're going to draw them a little differently to the way that we did on the other side. Okay, all the while I'm working towards this line that I drew. So now I can bring this line up 
Okay, again, about half a centimetre up from the bottom of the paw, just draw a little V. Because of the angle of these paws, this V is going to be quite close to the top of the toe um, and the edge of it. And all we're going to do with these Vs is we just know that we need to avoid them in shading. And we can get our B or 4B out again and start adding some shading. So let's start with the bottom of each toe. Again, we're going to do a little bit of dark shading along the bottom of each of these toes. This little end toe is going to be in quite a bit of shadow because it's further away. And then again, a, a second layer of slightly lighter shading. If you want to, you could use your HB for this shading because it, it will help you get that different tone without too much effort. Avoid making your swiggles the same length. So at the tip of your toe or the start of the toe, make it um, a really small line and it can get wider as it gets closer to the edge of the line as it gets towards the edge of the toe. We're going to have a little lump or fold here, some light shading underneath that. And then again, each of these little fold lines is going to have a bit of darker shading and some lighter shading. As we get closer to the dog's face, we want to do some dark shading to separate the face from the rest of the body and make it come forward. So here you can see the edge of the face has got no shading, but the start of the body has got quite dark shading. And this makes the face come forward, it pushes the body back. We need to have that contrast in your picture. Okay, so I'm pressing really hard here along the side of the face, several different directions. You might find as you do the shading, you need to go over the fold lines that you drew earlier and darken them. Okay, over this fold line here, we need to have a bit of dark shading. Okay, and I'm just making my outline a little bit stronger um, so that the pore is clear where the pore ends and where it begins. Right, the last section that we need to add is just this little bit of body that's at the back. So above the head, just going to draw a little bit of a jagged curve that almost follows the shape of the head. You can add a bit of shading into it if you want to. And then behind this ear, from where there's the crease that we drew earlier, from that spot down to just before this crease we're going to add in a little bit of his body and again that needs to have quite dark shading on it because that we really want that to be pushed back that's in the distance work hard on this area here there should be a difference between the front paw and the rest of his body we want to show that they're at different depths so making it darker pushes it back Okay, now we are again going to just have a look at the whole picture and see what things are working and what things aren't. So if I have a look at my picture, I can see that I need to make the shading on the mouth a bit darker. I'm pressing really hard to get these dark tones here. Again, when you're doing cross hatching, it's important to have different tones to stop your picture looking from like just one big blob. I'm going to darken the muzzle area too, so that it's a bit more different to the background so I'm just doing another light layer of cross hatching over the muzzle and then you might find if you do that you have to then darken this little patch underneath the nose so I'm going to go over that patch again make it a bit darker I'm going to darken this gel that's lying on the floor if you would like to practice cross hatching you could try this picture using a pen a pen is a really good tool to practice cross hatching with I'm going to add a bit more shading to this nose. Finally, we can cast a shadow. Um, now, we've done a lot of cross hatching, and to make our shadow, we're going to use some smooth shading just so that there's a contrast or a difference. So, you can use the floor line that we started the picture with as your base and just go around the bottom of the animal. I'm using the side of my pencil so I, I get as much of the lead as possible on the page and it also creates a smoother line. And then once you've, you're happy with the shadow that you've drawn, you could leave it like this if you wanted to, or you can take your finger or a piece of tissue, just rub over the shading, make it really smooth. You can see the first time I was rubbing with the lines or in the direction that I drew my pencil lines. Now, if I um, rub my finger in the opposite direction, it actually smudges out all those little pencil lines that are still showing. 
So if you're finding that you can't blend out some of your shading, you can still see the pencil lines, try changing the direction that you're rubbing your pencil with. Right, and there you have a French Bulldog. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We upload new videos every week. If you have any questions about the Bulldog drawing, please comment in the, the comment section below and we will get back to you. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you would like to learn how to use a grid to create drawings, why not check out our video on using a grid to draw an elephant.